Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, lecture number two in the course of, on thermodynamics. Today, I will continue uh, discussing the topic, uh, the concept of entropy, and in particular, I would like to show you how to use entropy in a real research. So, we'll take with, uh, together with you an example of a problem you know very little about and draw conclusions about behavior of a particular physical system. So today I will talk about Clausius theorem, entropy as a function of state. I will talk how I will describe how entropy shows up in fundamental laws of nature, and I would like to show you how to use the concept of entropy in real research. Well, first of all, enigma of ratio q to t, and something which was defined as entropy in the previous lecture. This lecture will, by the way, define it slightly differently, but let me first pay attention to uniqueness of this quantity. Well, imagine you have two reservoirs, hot and cold. You have two working uh, substances and two engines. This is reversible engine. And this is arbitrary engine. Imagine, uh, well, you shouldn't imagine, we know it is law, that uh, we basically state that efficiency of arbitrary engine, of course, should be less or equal than efficiency of reversible engine. And it means that The efficiencies can be expressed in terms of this equation, this inequality. For the case of reversible engine, we know that this expression should be valid. This is T1 temperature of hot reservoir, T2 temperature of cold reservoir. This was shown in the previous lecture, and it was also shown in the previous course, Wernthaler's theory of heat. From here, we conclude, by the way, we put this as absolute values, that inequality like this should be present, and taken into account that Q2 is negative and Q1 is positive, looking at this expression, you can say that if you look at the total cycle, then some of ratios of heat divided by temperature for the whole cycle should be negative, where equality, uh, sorry, uh, should be negative or equal to zero, where equality is the, is the case of a reversible cycle. So here we arrive to a conclusion which is uh, also called Clausius theorem. It says that for any cycle, that operates between two reservoirs, if you calculate an integral like this, the result will be negative or equal to zero where the equality holds for a reversible cycle. Well, here it's a good moment to come back to our definition of entropy, which we introduced last lecture, and slightly correct this, because now we have 
again, a good moment to emphasize the importance of this ratio, heat and temperature. So from ti this time, uh, this moment on, we define entropy as a ratio like this, and this is very important uh, remark that entropy is defined only for reversible process. If you take a, reverse, a process which is reversible, you look at the amount of heat transferred to the system or rejected by the system, you divide by temperature, and you will, you in this case, you can find an entropy change. So in particular case, if you want to calculate an entropy change upon a process of transferring system from state A to state B, you have to make sure that this process, first of all, is reversible, and then calculate this integral. Well, entropy, as I said, and emphasized several times, this is the key quantity in thermodynamics. Entropy is a function of state, and entropy is additive quantity. So if you have a body with entropy S1, and if you have a body with entropy S2, the total entropy in these two cases would be S1 plus S2, because entropy by definition is additive quantity. Entropy is a function of state. It means if I have point A and point B, it doesn't matter how I come from point A to point B, the entropy change would be the same. In order to show this, I have this point A, point B, in the coordinate system of x large, some property that we observe, and x small, some external stimulus that we change, and what we have, we have now path C and a path D. The whole cycle A, C, B, D, A is reversible. If the whole cycle is reversible, then we can use Clausius' theorem and write this expression, A, C, B, D, A. It also means that entropy change can be calculated A, C, B, D, A using, uh, it also means that instead of this expression, we can put the differential of entropy. Then, for the integral A, C, B, D, A, we can uh, write this integral in terms of two integrals, A, C, B, plus B, D, A. It also means that A, C, uh, B uh, A, D, B. And since A, C, B, S is equal to entropy in state B minus entropy in state A, what we obtain is from this and this expression that Either you follow root C or you follow root D, the entropy change in both cases the same. So we can conclude that entropy is a function of state. Another very important thing is to look at the entropy change in terms of, uh, in the case of reversible and irreversible processes. Well, imagine that I have a cycle where I can come from point 
A to point B via reversible path. And I can come from point B to point A via irreversible path. Well, we still remember that entropy change is defined only for reversible process. Then, for any process that you, you may like to consider, we can write Clausius theorem. Then, if you follow uh, this cycle, It consists of two parts. One is irreversible, and the second one is reversible. And according to the Clausius theorem, it should be negative or equal to zero. Reversible A is equal to A minus SB. Since we're talking about reversible process, we can define an entropy change in this case. And it gives me, looking at these two expressions, that if you talk about whatever process you can imagine, reversible, irreversible, If you look at the integral like this, this quantity would be less or equal to entropy change between points A and B, if we, uh, wh wh which we observe when we follow uh, from state A to state B in a reversible way. Well, from here, you arrive to a very important conclusion that dS is larger or equal to this expression. And if you assume that we are talking about isolated system, that there is no heat transfer to the system and the no heat is rejected by the system, so that delta Q is equal to zero, we actually obtain a fundamental law of nature. Whatever process you are talking about, entropy change can be either positive or zero. Entropy of isolated system cannot decrease. In fact, this inequality expressed the second law of thermodynamics, and this was one of the main uh, breakthroughs in physics of 19th century. This is the original paper of uh, Clausius, uh, who formulated two main laws, He's where he states that the total energy of the world must be constant, but if you think about entropy, total entropy of the world is at maximum, so it cannot increase, so it has already reached maximum. It's either zero, uh, the entropy change is either zero or positive. So if you talk about the whole world, if you, if you assume that the world is a thermodynamic equilibrium, the entropy of the world is at maximum. Also, very interesting quote of uh, Arnold Sommerfeld, who was a uh, professor of many Nobel Prize winners. He actually, actually expressed entropy, uh, giving, uh, expressed the role of entropy in physics saying that in the huge manufactory of natural processes, the principle of entropy occupies the position of manager who dictates the man and method of the whole business, while least energy merely does the bookkeeping, balancing debits and credits. So this is more or less the role of entropy in physics, and that's why I would like to emphasize it's very important concept of in physics, and in particular in thermodynamics. So let me come with the example how to use entropy in real research. So you've heard about magnets. You know what magnets are. So in the course of electricity and magnetism, you learn about ferromagnetic materials in particular. Just uh, 
Uh, as an example, I take a ma magnet that's similar to the magnet that you can find in the fridge. Uh, every magnet, as you know, produces magnetic field. The strength of magnetic field is defined by so-called magnetization of the magnet, magnetic moment of the magnet. And we know that magnets, uh, they can influence each other. It's because magnetic field created by one magnet interacts with magnetization of another magnet. And if you want to describe work performed by one magnet or by magnetic field of one magnet on another magnet, then we use the following expression. So zero is a fundamental constant, H is magnetic field, and dm is the change in the magnetization of the magnet which was caused by magnetic field. So this is something that we take as definition. Also, if you measure, if you take ferromagnetic medium like iron, for instance, or nickel or cobalt, and if you increase temperature, you can find that upon increase of temperature, magnetic properties of magnets are lost. So basically, if you measure magnetic moment of a ferromagnet as a function of temperature, you will find that it decreases following certain law. So we know nothing about ferromagnetism, but using thermodynamics, I would like to find this law, how magnetization how of the magnet depends on temperature. So in my case, I will also write M large, and M large is more convenient quantity because, well, depending on the book, it is either magnetization divided by volume or magnetization divided by mass. So I will talk about a medium of unit mass, for instance, and I will work with large M, not with small M, but physically they are very similar. In physics, physical meaning is very similar. Well, how to use entropy? My first step is to find a function which is at minimum if a magnet at thermodynamic equilibrium. Well, just trust me at the moment that if, if I define function like internal energy minus T times uh, temperature times entropy minus mu zero fundamental constant H M, this quantity F would be at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium. Why? Well, first, you write the first law of thermodynamics. Second, you notice that work performed on this system is given by this expression. Third, we have two ways to proceed. Well, depending on, uh, on, on, on the fact whether we talk about reversible or irreversible processes. If process is reversible, because TDS, this is definition. So it means that delta U is equal to mu zero H D M plus TDS. And if per process is irreversible,
then the situation is the following. So it means that if this is the case for reversible process, for irreversible process, we will have inequality here. And if you put now this expression uh, into expression for differential uh, of this quantity f, you will find that df is less or equal to minus s dt minus mu zero m dh. And if we consider the case when h is constant, and t is constant, it means that the f is less or equal to zero. So it means that this quantity in thermodynamic equilibrium, this quantity is at minimum. It may only increase, uh, it may only decrease or stay uh, unchanged. Well, so we take this quantity as a value, as, as a quantity which must be at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium. We'll keep it in mind. So now, we will see how this quantity behaves as a function of magnetization and temperature. So obviously, this guest function F, as we have just seen, depends on temperature, that depends on entropy, that depends on magneti magnetic field and magnetization. Well, i put here m small. Then, let's look just at the magnetic part of it. And it would be given by part measured at zero magnetic field plus part which is present when magnetic field is not zero. My question is, what can we say about this quantity? Well, since if H is zero, F is D minus Ts, and basically you can say about, uh, you can uh, derive the behavior of F if you know the behavior of U, of the internal energy. Now I have a question for you. What do you expect in the behavior of internal energy if we change magnetic magnetization, magnetic moment of a magnet? There is no reason to claim that internal energy with of magnet with magnetization up is different than internal energy of magnets with magnetization down. If you don't understand this issue, please raise this question at the question hour. We will discuss it in more details. It also means that this quantity doesn't change upon changing sign of the magnetization. Now, if I express this quantity F in terms of Taylor series, Starting from this, equation, I am allowed to take only even terms with respect to magnetization into account and nothing else. So let me end at the term of the, uh, of the power of four and terms ought with respect to magnetization is not allowed because otherwise this expression 
wouldn't be satisfied. Now, if you look at the behavior of magnetization as a function of temperature, as I said, it was decreasing and finally it disappeared. These points is called in physics Curie points. So obviously, if the uh, temperature is less than Curie point, situation that corresponds to thermodynamic equilibrium is the situation when M is larger than zero, or M is not equal to zero, let's put it. When temperature is larger than Curie temperature, here, magnetization should be equal to zero in thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, looking at this expression, you can say that if this quantity F should be at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium, and if you want to satisfy these expressions, these inequalities, then A must be negative for temperatures below Curie temperature and positive for temperatures above Curie temperature. Taking the simplest law we can imagine that satisfies these requirements, we write linear dependence then and this dependence coefficient a should be positive then we write the very same expression And we un keep in mind that this quantity F is at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium. So it means that if you take derivative with respect to magnetization, it should be zero at thermodynamic equilibrium. So we take this derivative and what we obtain is 2A T C minus T M minus, uh, sorry, plus pl uh, 4B M cube equal to zero. Well, and uh, a solution of this exp uh, equation uh, with m equal to zero is not interesting. So we look at another solution of this equation. And it gives me A coefficient A should be negative below Curie temperature and it should be positive above the Curie temperature. And in this case, uh, if, you, if you are looking for the simplest equation, the simplest expression that can, get, can satisfy uh, these requirements, we can take linear equation here. So just T minus TC, T minus Curie temperature, and A should be uh, positive coefficient. Then we write this expression down for f, uh, for, the, for the function f. Then we, keep an, we, we, we remember that if we talk about thermodynamic equilibrium, this function f should be at minimum. So to find this minimum, we take the derivative of f with respect to m, magnetization. So, and we, in the, obviously in thermodynamic equilibrium, when this f is at minimum, this derivative should be zero. Then we write this expression down. Sorry, let's I will correct this. We write it down. Then uh, a to b, and this is equal to a to b t c. 1 minus T, T, C. This is the law, which eventually gives us that M is equal to 2 T, C, 2 B, T minus T, C. 
square root. This is the law which we have just derived based on very simple assumptions, also extremely simple assumptions, probably even oversimplified assumptions. So taking uh, simply, uh, the, well, simply just taking just the simplest function we could imagine, for instance, for the case of the coefficient a. So what you can expect from this law? Well, practically nothing, right? So it's something that we could uh, basically guess uh, without paying any attention to uh, microscopic nature of uh, magnetism, without paying any attention to origin of magnetism. But what you get at the end is a perfect match between the law we have just derived. Oh, just a moment. I noticed a mistake. The law we have just derived in experimental data. So this approach does really work. And what we needed for that, no knowledge of magnetism, just knowledge of entropy and the fact that entropy is at maximum at thermodynamic equilibrium, which gives us another conclusion that this guess function f should be at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium, and that's it. So next to this function f, which we call in future thermodynamic potential, uh, in particular, it's called also Helmgold's function or free energy, we can find other functions which are at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium, and these are internal energy, enthalpy, and Gibbs function. These are all defined in the way, as you can see, in the way shown on slides. As I said, they're all at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium. You can find it yourself by calculating differentials. And they, all these functions next to internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz function, or Gibbs function, all these functions, these are quantities, uh, these quantities are functions of state. As I said, they all at minimum at thermodynamic equilibrium. The only difference between Gibbs function, Helmholtz uh, function of free energy, enthalpy, and internal energy is that these functions, they operate with different set of variables. If Gibbs function, for instance, uses temperature and pressure, in the case of gas, as variables, then internal energy uses entropy uh, and volume, in the case of gas, as variables. And free energy, in the case of gas, uses temperature and volume as variables. In our case, we use magnetic field and temperature as variables. Well, this is not really important, which, uh, how you call uh, thermodynamic potential, it is important, it is a function which is at minimum and thermodynamic equilibrium, and it is important which variables uh, are used to define this function. Well, to take home message for today, entropy helps to describe the behavior of thermodynamic system around equilibrium. Entropy helps to describe irreversible processes. Entropy helps to understand uh, not only the behavior of engines, but also behavior of uh, physical processes in general. And this is an example of about magnetism. And once again, the quote of Sommerfeld that if you think about nature as a manufactory, the entropy would be manager, while uh, the, law, the, 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 the law of conservation of energy will play a role of uh, a counter who, accountant who will uh, just make sure that debit and credits are in order. Thank you very much.